My name is Titan, and I will be your guide in the wonderful world of science. Today, we will explore the reproduction system of flowering plants. It's going to be a real adventure, so come on, let's go! Wow, aren't they beautiful? Do you know that a flower is made up of several parts? Let's investigate and find out. A flower is made up of six parts. The pedicel, receptacle, sepals, petals, stamen, and pistil. All right, we are now looking at the pedicel, which is also known as the flower stalk. The enlarged end of the flower is the receptacle. Yes, that's this one right here. Sepals are small leaves that are directly under a flower. They protect the flower when it is still a bud. Okay, these little things here are called petals. They are the colored parts of flowers and are shaped like leaves. They are also sometimes scented to attract insects. Usually, flowers have about 4 to 10 petals. They also protect the flower bud before it opens. Do you know what a stamen is? Well, a stamen is the male part of the flower that produces pollen. Well, if you have a male, then obviously you've got to have a female, right? The female part of the plant has its own name too. We call it the pistil. Let me tell you just a little bit about the stamen. It is made up of some long stems called filaments with blobs on top called anthers. The anthers produce a golden powdery dust called pollen grains. Okay, let's get back to the pistol, the female part of a flower. It has three parts, the stigma, the style, and the ovary. The style is a long stalk with a swollen base. The sticky part at the top of it is called the stigma, and the base of the style is the ovary that contains ovules or eggs. And just what does the pistil do? Well, it's like this. When an insect flies onto a flower to find nectar, it carries pollen grains from one flower to another. The pollen grain falls onto the stigma, travels down the style until it reaches the ovules in the ovary. The pollen grain joins with an egg in the ovules and dum de dum the seed begins to grow. This is called fertilization. As the seed grows, the flower dies and the seed falls to the ground and begins to grow into a new plant. Got it? Ah, that's how plants make baby plants. Let's move on. Let's look at types of flowers. There are two of them, bisexual flowers and unisexual flowers. Look at this carefully. 
Here, you can see that bisexual flowers have both the stamen and the pistil. Mmm. It means that it is both male and female. Strange, huh? But a unisexual flower is different. It contains either only the stamen or the pistil. Wow! This is like snow. Golden, yellow snow. Yes, this is the pollen grains I told you about. Do you know what pollen grains are? Well, pollen grains are formed in the pollen sacs and they are released when the anthers mature and split open. They are usually rough and sticky. Yuck. Ew. Ow. Yuck. Pollen from different plants can be of different shapes, sizes, and surface structure. Hmm. Talking about gametes. Well, a gamete is a reproductive cell. There are male and female gametes. We know that pollen grains carry the male gamete. So, where is the female? Well, it is in the ovary, in the ovule. <laughs> Do you want to know more about pollination? Pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma so that the male and female gametes can be joined to make new plants. There are two types of pollination. They are self-pollination and cross-pollination. Take a look at this. You can see that self-pollination occurs when pollen grains are transferred from the anther to the stigma of the same flower. It also occurs when pollen grains are transferred from the anther to the stigma of a different flower on the same plant. Unlike self-pollination, cross-pollination takes place when pollen grains are transferred to a flower on a different plant. Cross-pollination is better than self-pollination. Do you want to know why? Pollination produces young plants that are weak. This decreases their chances of survival. This means that cross-pollination is the better form of pollination. It produces baby plants that are healthier. Another advantage. Young plants that grow as a result of cross-pollination can adapt to environmental changes better. Hey, come here. Here. Shh. Do you know that flowers can be pollinated either by insects or by the wind? Yes, they can! Flowers pollinated by insects have different characteristics than that 
pollinated by the wind. Can you recognize the characteristics of insect pollinated flowers and wind pollinated flowers? Here, this will help you. And since the stigmas are very sticky, the pollen grains easily get stuck to them. Insect pollinated flowers have large scented and brightly colored flowers that have nectar to attract insects. These flowers also have a lot of pollen grains. Pollen grains are large, sticky and heavy with rough surfaces so that they can easily cling to the body of an insect. And since the stigmas are very sticky, the pollen grains easily get stuck to them. Okay, let's move on to the characteristics of wind-pollinated flowers. Ta-da! <laughs> Wind-pollinated flowers are small, dull and unscented. They do not produce nectar but have a lot of pollen grains. Unlike insect-pollinated flowers, pollen grains for wind-pollinated flowers are small and light so that they can easily be blown by the wind. Stamens have long, slender and flimsy filaments that sway easily in the slightest wind so that pollen grains are easily shaken out of the anchor. Stigmas protrude large and feathery so that floating pollen grains blown by the wind can easily land on them. That's as easy as ABC. Well, let me summarize all that in this diagram. It's time to look at fruits and seeds. Let's learn about how fruits and seeds develop in plants. This way. Here's something you should remember. The landing of pollen grains on the stigma marks the end of the pollination process. Pollination is then followed by fertilization, in which the male and the female gametes fuse or are joined together. However, in between pollination and fertilization, there are a few things that take place. Do you want to know what happens in between the two processes? The stigma makes a sugary liquid that causes the pollen grain to grow or germinate. As a result, a pollen tube grows out from each pollen grain. Look at this. You can see that the pollen grains that contain two nuclei, which are the vegetative and the generative nuclei, will both enter the pollen tube.
the generative nucleus will divide to form two male gametes, which the vegetative nucleus will soon disintegrate. Then... The pollen tube grows down the style and into the ovary where it enters a small hole known as the micropile in the wall of the ovule. Here, the tip of the pollen tube will absorb sap and burst to release the two male gametes. That's when fertilization takes place. Well, let me show you. Fertilization in flowers occurs in the ovary of the pistil when one of the male gametes fuses with the ovum to form the zygote. Then the zygote will develop into the embryo of the seed. The other male gamete will fuse with the definitive nucleus to form the endosperm nucleus which will then divide to form the endosperm. And finally... develop after fertilization. The ovary becomes the fruit and the ovule becomes the seed. The other parts of the flower like the sepals, the petals, the stamen, the stigma, and the style will wither and fall off. Come, let me show you some examples of what happens to flowers after fertilization. Look at this strawberry plant. Here, you can see that the ovary has become fleshy and juicy and good, delicious, wonderful to eat. Mmm! Yum yum. <laughs> mm. The apple plant, just like the strawberry plant, has an ovary that becomes flashy, sweet, and juicy. However, the sepals and the stamen remain and go. Yum! I like apples. What about this plant? This is the tomato plant. And during post-fertilization, the ovary will grow and its petals and stamens will fall off. Finally, the fruit turns ripe and is ready to eat. Yum yum. Mm. Oh, sorry, I can't help it. I just love fruits. Ah, let's take a look at what we have learned today. A flower is made up of six parts. The pistil is the female part of the plant that consists of the ovary, the style and the stigma. While the stamen, the male part of the plant, is made up of the anther and the filament. We have also learned that unisexual flowers are flowers that have either the stamen or the pistil and bisexual flowers that have both the pistil and the stamen. Remember what we have said about pollination? Well, it is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma so that fusion of the male and female gametes can take place. I also showed and explained to you that in between pollination and fertilization, the growth of the pollen tube from the pollen grain must occur as it is the pollen tube 
that delivers the male gametes to the ovary. Finally, we also learn that fruits and seeds are developed after fertilization. Shoo! 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 I think I have to go now. This bee is driving me crazy. Come here, you. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Come here.